This is one of my partners, Jan Armstrong, who's going to play it with me. There is a musical joke about three quarters of the way through, and I know you will catch it. <laughs> <laughs> the next number, which is a solo. So I'm going to tell you about this. My mother was a piano teacher, and she's a very talented pianist, from, my uncle tells me, from the time she was very young. And when she was 18, she entered an international piano contest, where you started and you had to win in the region. She was in the Wisconsin, Illinois region. And then you had to... Um, if you won there, which she did. There were 20 different winners. They went down to Houston, and they competed there, and she won. And this is the pin. 1936 is when she won it. And the contest was set up so that um, she had to play two numbers. One was a Rachmaninoff, and the other one was a piece of her choice. <laughs> when, when I was growing up, I would, my mother would go back and just sit down and play this piece, and I just loved it. It's called Caprice Viennois. It's written by the violinist Frisk Chrysler. 
So when I went back to piano, I got to thinking of this. I loved, I would sit on the stairs and listen to her play. So I bought the music and I looked at it and I said, well, maybe in a couple of years I could do this. So I've been, um, I played it for a couple of years now and I decided to memorize it. So I had not memorized anything in 50 years and there's something different that happens in memorizing. So um, this is Caprice Viennois. It's a piece I just love.
Thank you. So now, Jan and I are going to play a charming piece that's called Rondo. It's by Gurlitt. It's kind of going to sound a little um, Mozart-ish. So I am on piano, too.
so this uh, next piece is by Anton Arensky. It's a uh, it's the first movement of a suite. He wrote sort of early 1900s, so it's kind of around the same period as that Caprice Viennois, which is a period I find myself uh, really loving. Um, this piece is, uh, to me, it is really lush and lovely. So just as the caprice of somebody said, okay, how do I identify you? I would say, well, the caprice is, is pretty close. It's an important part of my identity. There's something about this piece that when you say you just love a piece of music, oh, I think this is gorgeous. And th there is a little joke that Sarah and I have, because when we go back to a place and we say, um, should we go back to your hard part or your hard part? Because <laughs> you're going to see Sarah do some pretty amazing things. And th there's a, a little, there's four measures that I used to get up every morning and do them for five minutes. And you'll know what those <laughs> <laughs>
this was, well, the first thing I'm going to say about this. When we started doing two pianos and then quartets, so this is a quartet with Paul Ruff and Sarah and Jan, that um, the repertoire for two pianos, eight pans, is not huge. And if you want to do show music, you will do Over the Rainbow. That's the repertoire. <laughs> and I kind of um, like doing show music. So I got to thinking about a year and a half ago, what would it take to be able to commission an arrangement of something that I wanted that is not in the repertoire? So I started researching, and you have to get permission from whoever owns the rights, which is Hal Leonard. And then you say, I want to create a medley of these, um, this particular group of music. And I said, I wanted to do Rodgers and Hammerstein. Oh, what a beautiful morning. If I loved you, you'll never walk alone and climb every mountain. So they said, yeah, you can do that. It's $20 every time you change the melody. <laughs> so where do you go? Ka-ching. OK. <laughs> the next one's ka-ching. So then it defined an arranger. And um, I actually sort of searched the world. I ended up in Singapore. I was in Wales talking to people. And I found a woman who was a recent graduate of Colorado College who was a, comp um, a composition major named Grace Hale. So I hired Grace, and we performed this last year both in Pueblo, we won first, and in the International Broadway um, War Competition, we won first, and so, which was great. So this morning, Lynn called me, and she says, I have COVID. But she says, I've called our teacher, Sarah, and she's coming to the rescue. And Sarah is the one we have worked on for all the ensemble work. And um, one of the things about brilliant musicians is they can do this, the rest of us can't. So we came at one and we rehearsed this one in the Mancini. And we are going to give Sarah the heroic intrepid award. <laughs> so we are incredibly impressed. Um, this is just. Uh, well, we just love this piece of music. It's from Rogers and Hammerstein in Italy.
Jan and I had been playing, we actually played two years in the Broadmoor competition. And as we were talking, as uh, Jan told me some months ago, she says, you know, I, I'm not so sure I want to do competitions anymore. And I said, well, I kind of like getting those trophies. <laughs> so, so, and Jan, who is, um, any of you who know Jan, she is the most cooperative person and just, uh, she's just a wonderful person. She says, you know, there's nothing wrong with having more than one duet partner because Jan and I want to continue to play for fun. And so I said, well, okay. So I started trying to think, who do I know that might be interested in doing um, a duet and playing in these competitions? And I, um, Cindy was my voice teacher about five years ago when I just started going back to piano. And I remembered she was so good at accompanying and transposing. She had just moved back to Jerusalem, uh, from <laughs> Jerusalem. She <laughs> had been in Jerusalem several years. And I said, well, Cindy, might you want to play? She said, sure. So we decided we wanted to do Fiddler on the Roof. And uh, Cindy's Jewish, I'm Christian, I directed it. Her son, I think, was it your son? Or who, your, some relative of yours. Son. Your son, her son directed it, we love the music. So we hired the same person who did, um, who's gonna do the last piece, the Mancini, his name's Sean McCarthy Grant. He's a composition student at Howard University. So we said, oh, let's do Fiddler on the Roof. So this is Cindy Saunders and me.
last number. So after last year when we did the Rogers and Hammerstein, you know, I said, well, you know, we really love playing with this quartet. We said, okay, what should we do? Well, I was, um, I got to thinking about Henry Mancini. <laughs> and years ago, I, uh, with one of the books I was writing, it was called The Collaborative Art of Filmmaking, and I interviewed a lot of sort of the top people in the film business. And I interviewed Henry Mancini. I went to his office. He, I suppose we were there about an hour. Such a nice guy, such a kind man. And a couple days later in the mail, I get a picture of him to Linda and Romancini. And I thought, you know, just think of those cute things, the Pink Panther theme, the Baby Elephant Walk, Moon River. So again, I contacted Hal Leonard, and they said, three pieces, OK, between the two. And um, then we hired the same person who did the Fiddler, Sean McCarthy Grant. And he arranged this. Um, there's a lot of fun things here. I'm the baby elephant for about 18 measures. You won't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> and Sarah, who has stepped in, and this is this is a pretty difficult piece. And our intrepid uh, Sarah, who is playing piano one primo. Thank you. 